Have you ever dreamed of a better world? I certainly have. I do it all the time. My name is Gerardo Porteni Bacal. I am 19 years old and I come here from Mexico City. But let me take you back to when I was five years old. A marvelous adventure, a trip with my father Eduardo into Veracruz, Mexico. He wanted to show me a piece of land he had just bought and wanted to reforest in a non-profit manner. He isn't only my father, he's my best friend and my role model. And he shared with me his passion, his vision, more than 100,000 trees planted there to reforest my country. He started talking about ecology and about environmental concerns and about many other words I didn't actually understood at the time. But now, I certainly do. I know that with technology, we can help ecology. And with that philosophy, I founded my first organization, nonprofit organization, Green Life, in which we encourage to eradicate all of the unnecessary use of paper, saving more trees. I am in front of an outstanding audience, social innovators, entrepreneurs, philanthropists, rock stars, <laughs> thinkers, and doers. You all have brilliant ideas. I had my first ideas on philanthropy when I was 16 years old, sitting on a bench on high school. It was October, the International Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And there was pink everywhere. But I noticed a slight problem. Breast cancer, a disease that must be confronted with education and information, and my school without a campaign yet. A campaign? Sweatshirts? Pink sweatshirts? Yes, we can wear that. We can build awareness with them. Guess what? It wasn't easy. I went with my principal without any money to finance my own project. Without any experience, I wasn't a prosperous businessman. I really, to tell you the truth, I am not personally related to breast cancer. Thanks to God, no one in my family, nor any close friend of mine, has gone through breast cancer. But that only motivated me more because I understood that you don't need to wait for something bad to happen to you, to start helping. I can see many of you being in the same position I was, with a marvelous idea, a project you wanted to implement, but you knew exactly how to do it. I needed to get the creativity flowing to solve the monetary issue I was facing. So I did a pre-sale and it exceeded my expectations because not only girls, but boys and young men were using a pink sweatshirt. And that's how Pink Life Against Breast Cancer, my second nonprofit organization, was created. And it was created as a cause that we could literally wear. It became a fashion. It was something cool, philanthropy now. We created the cool chair of social help. Well, we actually started doing pretty well. We had a lot of funds we have raised, but we didn't exactly knew what to do with them. So I went and I searched for other breast cancer associations, and we allocated those funds through them. And that was more efficient because together we could help more women. But it isn't exactly that. It was not something only economical, but it is something educational. And as you can see, I am clearly not a doctor or an expert at the field. So these foundations were able to provide me with doctors, lecturers that went to these schools and gave the students information about breast cancer awareness. It was a multilateral win-win situation. Really, guys, in any aspect of life, partnerships don't only add up, but they multiply to your efforts. Treating with so many different breast cancer associations at the time Women Foundations got me aware of a particular fact. There weren't many men involved in the fight against breast cancer. 
In fact, every time I went to handle a meeting of this type, there was a room full of women. And this wasn't exactly right. But how could I do it? How could I engage men to join in to the fight against breast cancer? Do you like speed? Do you like cars? Do you like adrenaline? Well, I certainly do. And that's why I started Pink Life Racing, the first professional car racing team in Latin America that raises non-profit in benefit of a social cause. It was amazing because men from all over Mexico started engaging, coming to our races, participating in our events, and having an official channel to support the fight against breast cancer. Men helping women. Ideas started flowing again. The creativity came in, all of the energy, and stop! Gerardo, ¿qué pasa? What are you doing here? You're going too fast. Oh my god, are you actually doing philanthropy? Or are you being one step ahead, doing social innovation? Putting not only your material resources, but your ideas and your hard work to create sustainable solutions to the problems that affect us most. Gerardo, are you the only one? Of course not. There are a lot of other social innovators out there. So I went out and I found them. And we became a family of friends under the flag of my fourth nonprofit organization, Life Republic, we actually were able to share best practices, common obstacles, ideas, and stronger. We were really stronger together. It wasn't about their gender, about their ethnicity, about their age or nationality. It was all about their ideas their passion, and their determination to translate those ideas into a positive reality for our country. This family of friends actually resembles a lot to my early years as a child. I was brought up in a house in which it didn't stop you to be a boy or a girl, in which me and my sisters, Melissa and Paola, were equally valued, but we had equal responsibilities. My mom, Tammy, and my dad constructed this. But not only with their words, but with their example, by participating in house chores and family expenses. I can even state that this line of equality can go way back in my family. But the closest example I can find is Dr. Alicia Bacal, to me just grandmother. She started her research and her work in the history field decades ago, and she got recognized by UNESCO as a memory of the world. Not mattering if she was a man or a woman, she's a woman, of course, but um, it was all about her efforts and the quality of them. Really, she taught me that all human beings have inherent dignity, and I love all my family for that. Now, at 19 years old, I go out of the equal bubble I was brought up in. And I contrast it with an unequal world, one in which more than half of its population gets limited every day just because of their gender. You know, inequality doesn't make sense. And I couldn't stand this anymore. So I went on and engaged into the gender equality conversations. And I noticed something. Gender equality is a cause of both men and women, because it benefits both men and women. But nowadays, we have more than 1 billion young men between the ages of 15 and 30, the biggest youth bulge in the history of the world that are unrepresented on matters of gender equality matters that affect them, positively or negatively. That's what we come in to do in Young Men for Gender Equality, my fifth nonprofit organization. By supporting the United Nations Women He for She campaign, we give a platform and a voice to all of these young men all over the world to take their ideas and their actions toward a more equal world. 
Now my circle of happiness was definitely getting completed. But it wasn't only about inventing or creating, it was about supporting other causes. And I understood this through my work in the United Nations Youth Fund Mentorship Program. I am blessed to be a mentor for a youth-led organization in Bolivia that works for the sanitation of water. They are amazing. Hola, Bolivia. Gracias, Latino America. Really, there are lots of organizations out there that you can go and support. They're waiting for your support. And it is great because, you know, I'm sure you're probably thinking, oh, this guy is like whatever, I have done too much. But you know, in philanthropy, too much doesn't exist. I have been lucky enough to find many different groups of persons that have helped me through these organizations, through our organizations, make my dreams a reality. By taking actions on your ideas, you will be able to make your dreams a reality. And believe me, they will not only be an idea worth spreading, they will be ideas worth doing. And by doing this, you will certainly live the life you love. And you will, for sure, love the life you live. Thank you. <laughs>